Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. One of our rides a couple weeks ago I stripped my belt so we wanted to make this video to show people how it may have happened, what the symptoms are, and how to change the primary belt to a chain drive primary. We will also go over the benefits and cons to each of them. I just want to say real quick I apologize for the substandard footage on the writing that you're seeing. The lens got a little dusty on me and every time the sun hits the camera it flashes the screen. So I want to start out by talking about what may have caused my belt to strip because under normal use conditions the primary belt really shouldn't be having any issues and Riley's hasn't had any issues to date and we've been doing the same kind of riding. So before riding this day we had oiled our belts with silicon lubricant to reduce the squeaking that we were hearing. I used more than Riley did and Riley didn't have any issues but I believe that this along with the dusty trails and hard riding might have contributed to the failure of the belt. Now there's no way to know for certain and silicon lubricant shouldn't cause the belt to strip but it probably didn't do it any favors. There are belt dressings out there that will help reduce the squeaking and improve the life of the belt without increasing the risk of slipping. Fortunately, we didn't have any and we had silicon lubricant on hand and in all honesty, we didn't think that it would cause any issues. I would recommend that people use belt specific dressing to help reduce the chances of a stripped belt even though there's no way to know for certain if silicon lubricant was the cause of this. I also want to say that proper belt tensioning will also reduce the chances of stripping your belt. It is possible that my belt got detensioned from the skid plate bending in and knocking the motor out of adjustment. The Luna bash guards that Riley and I bought look good and they're definitely stronger than the stock one, but after a few log hops it was already bent in at least half an inch and making contact with the motor. I didn't think it was an issue and it was kind of a pain in the ass to deal with so I just decided to keep riding, but it's, it's very possible that this contributed to the belt stripping. So on the car ride home after having to push my bike uphill back to the staging area where our car was located, I decided to just go ahead and order a chain conversion kit for the primary drive. And the reason I did this was mainly I really did not want to have another belt strip on me. I also didn't think that there was any huge downsides to go into a chain because this, the noise wasn't a huge concern for me and when the conversion kit cost $65 for the entire kit versus the belt costing $46, both those prices are not including shipping of course, but for me that extra money just was worth it for me to go to the chain. The sound comparison is at the end of the video, but I'm going to summarize the results right now. The chain drive primary conversion is about twice as loud as the belt drive primary. The belt drive primary clocked in at 96 decibels, while the chain primary clocked in at 114. I was not expecting it to be as loud as it was, since the chain on the rear is not very loud. The chain drive primary isn't exactly all chain noise though, but intensified motor noise. After riding it around a little bit, I believe that the chain ends up conducting more vibrations from the motor than the rubber belt did, which is where a lot of the additional sound comes from. In all honesty, I don't like the way that it sounds, and if I had to do it over again, I would probably just buy a replacement belt and be more diligent about keeping the proper tension. The additional noise is enough to go from being inaudible from a distance to still being heard. Even though I could deal with the sound it was a good noise, it just isn't. It sounds like a high-pitched squeal that is anything but pleasing. That being said, the footage of the failure is coming up in the ride, so I want you to listen closely for clicking noises that develop and begins to worsen before the belt strips completely. Try to stay out of the rocks a little bit. Oh. 40 is doing a good job for that. Wow. 
Wow. I'm not even close to bottoming out this 40. Got a little bucked on that one. Try and stay out of the rut. real hard to avoid it on a dirt bike. This one does a little bit better. Oh, this is real rock. Oh, wow. Definitely getting arm pumped at this point. Got a flat. It was sounding like I had a flat. Something is wrong is happening here. Well, there's a knocking happening. Something doesn't sound right. Take a look at that. I don't want to push it now. This sounds not good. I think my belt is slipping. That's what that sounds like. Definitely a belt slipping issue. Sounds like I stripped it. The first step for the chain conversion is to undo the pulley nut. I decided to use an impact and keep the rear tire on for this so I could uh, make sure that shaft doesn't turn. If you were to use a ratchet wrench and you took the wheel off, you might have problems with it spinning around on you. Since my belt was completely stripped here, I decided to just cut it off with some pliers. I would recommend doing this as there's really no reason to save a ruined belt. If for some reason you wanted to save the belt, then you would just want to wait until you remove the hub and slip it off over the side. Here's what a stripped belt looks like. Nothing too special, but as you can see, it is completely gone. The next step is to remove the belt pinion sprocket. And to do that, I used a puller with an impact and it came off pretty nicely. If you don't have a puller, I would recommend buying one just because it's going to make your life much easier and you have it if you need it for anything else. But if you just will not do that, then you could try coming at it with a pry bar or some sort of slide hammer. The next step here is to remove the tension on your chain and remove the rear wheel. At this point, it might be a good decision to just bust open the chain and undo the master link. I didn't do it at this point because I didn't realize, but after looking back at it, this would be the best time to do it. The next part is a little bit more tricky. Um, you have to undo this swing arm bolt here. It's a through bolt with an odd nut on the other side, and you can buy a specialty tool for this. But that's not something that I wanted to do. So what I did was I took a pair of vice grip pliers and a pry bar. I clamped it on there and then used the pry bar to get some leverage to turn that thing around. And it actually worked quite nicely. And I'll be doing the same method to put it back on. I forgot to record it, but as you can see here, the swing arm is detached from the suspension linkage. 
you're going to want to do this as you're not going to get the swing arm off unless you do. The next step is the most difficult and it is to remove the belt primary to secondary chain hub. Now this is in there pretty tightly and you just kind of have to hammer and pull it out. I ended up having to need two hands and some help and it just took me a while so I didn't really get it on footage but you just got to wiggle that thing out there and mine was pretty tight. Next you want to hit out the key that is inside of the old pulley because you're going to need that to put the new one on. Once you have the key out from the old pinion, you're going to want to bust open the conversion kit and pull out your new pinion gear for the chain. Slide it over the motor shaft and after that you're going to want to tap the key in. The key should go in pretty easily, just use a punch and tap it in with a hammer. At this point I would recommend feeding your chain in from behind so you don't forget it and wrap it around the pinion gear. Next up you're going to have to swap out the other pulley that's on the hub and to do that I put it in a vise and just use an allen to take these out. They were really gunked up and put, had some sort of weird Loctite on there so be aware. Once the old one is off go ahead and throw the new one on there. You're going to want to make sure to put the raised edge down and it's pretty simple. The threads in here were pretty gunked up so I'm spraying some lubricant in there and I'm going to clean it out with uh, the old bolt just to make sure everything goes back in nicely. I used some standard grease when I threaded these back in there just so they went in easily and to be sure that they got the proper torque down in there. Once you have all of them in, do one last tighten on all of them and make sure it's on there good. You don't want these falling out on you. Once you have the hub back together, wrap the chain around it, set it in there, and you'll be ready to put the swing arm on. The next step here is to get the swing arm back on there. It's kind of difficult, so you're going to have to tap it in with a hammer. And it, there's just no good way to do this. You're just going to have to struggle and fight it. So unfortunately, mine was pretty tight, and it took me a while to do this. Once you have the swing arm wedged in there between the bike's frame, now you got to do the same thing with the hub. This one's even worse because there's pretty lightly set um, bushings in there that need to fit inside the bearings. And I ended up having to grind them down to create the clearance to get them in. This thing was just fighting me and I was getting very frustrated with it. Once you have it all in there, uh, it's time to put the swing arm bolt back through. So just tap that in, throw some grease on it, and you'll be ready to put the nut back on. I took apart my whole suspension linkage for powder coating, so the next thing you got to do is just throw that back together. It's the reverse of removal, so if you took them apart, I'm going to assume you know how to do it. Just be sure to keep track of all the, the bushings and bearings and bolts, or else you're going to have a bad day. Once you have everything in, you're going to want to do one last tighten on everything and wipe it down. Last step here is to throw the yeah, rear, rear wheel back on. Probably I'm not going to go into too much detail around. here because I'm assuming if you took it off, you're going to be able to get it back on. Once you have the wheel back on and you can hold that shaft still, you're going to want to slam the nut back on with an impact and uh, set up the proper tension on the motor. This is a sound test for the chain drive primary. This is a sound test for the belt drive primary. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then please consider liking it. And if you would like to see more content similar to this, then please consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody.